Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're back with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some of the hero matchups and hero picks in the recent game two of Bet Boom versus Tundra. I really thought that Tundra's draft had a couple of holes this game and it caused them to have a very difficult time. Also, the Timber had a really, really good game and I want to talk about some of his decisions. So yeah, this video is going to be a lot more general than my average video. My typical video is, you know, a uh, tier list on, on what's going on in the meta or like some hero guide. Today's video is going to be a lot more general, just give you guys good information on Dota to apply to your pubs and just to have in the back of your mind for your matches. On top of that, go sign up to the Gamely website, guys. I'm posting new content over there almost every day, and I'll see you there. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is Bristleback support. I'm going to show you the lane real quick. If you've never heard of Bristleback support and you don't know why it can be a thing, let me explain it quickly. So this is a legit pick. Now, it's typically picked in the pro scene as a flex pick. You pick it with the idea in mind of uh, baiting the enemy team to counter the bristleback and then putting it as a support. Also, some people just think it's a good support. And the reason why is Goo at level one is 4.5 minus armor. I mean, that's crazy, guys. 4.5 minus armor is negative two armor on Mars. On a hero like Batrider, it puts him all the way down to basically zero armor. And so you can imagine why that's pretty good at level one you literally put heroes into negative armor. And in Dota, negative armor is really bad. However, when you put them into negative armor, you need to be able to actually hit them. This is where Bristle doesn't really thrive. The reason why he doesn't thrive here too much is 295 movement speed isn't that good, and he doesn't hit exactly that fast. It's not terrible, but in general, you want someone to help you. And Luna just isn't that hero. Like, it's just not that hero. And so I think where Tundra's draft falls short here is the Luna pick. They picked Luna after picking the Bristle because they felt that, hey, our Bristle's countered a little bit. Drow is a pretty annoying carry for Bristle. Reason why is she outranges his quills. She buys uh, Silver Edge very naturally and she buys Pike very naturally. So she's very good at kiting him. She can even buy Ags and go anti-heal. I'm not a huge fan of Ags. I don't think it's so good. But the big thing is she's a very natural silver buyer. And also they picked Mars. Mars Spear turns people around when he spears them to a tree. You can imagine why that's good against Bristleback, it turns them around. And so I think they felt that he is countered. They also ended up having a Timber. This was after the Luna pick though, to be fair. And so they're like, yeah, let's put it support. But in the lane, you need people to be able to commit right clicks. You want your laning partner to be able to commit right clicks with your hero. And so I think this hero is way better with a couple of carry picks that I will now list. So what would it be good with? Well, first of all, there could be something like Gyrocopter where Flak Cannon is going to hit the person that you're gooing. And, you know, Flak Cannon is way more effective if they have no armor. You can also easily put goo on both the heroes. It's only 12 mana. It's basically nothing. And it's on a 1.8 second cooldown. So that combo is really good. I don't think Luna's the worst because Luna can sort of fight. She can sort of click beam. I also wish White Mon would put more stacks on the Mars. I think something he's misplaying a little bit here is that he's just putting all the goo on Bat. But what's interesting is on, on Bristle, the first stack of goo is better than the rest. The first stack is minus 4.5 armor. Every stack after that is minus 2.5, which is still a lot and it's more than half of the first stack, but still it's better to actually split it up. And the reason why I really feel this way is it would help the Luna fight the Mars for last hits. It's super effective. It's actually better on Mars than it is against Batrider. But look at this, minus nine armor. Imagine there's a flat cannon coming in, right? Or another hero that I really like, imagine this is a Marcy. I know Marcy carry isn't popular in the pro scene right now. Uh, so this would be more of a pup thing. I actually think it's better than people give it credit for. But imagine there's a Marcy hopping on this guy, not minus nine armor. I mean, that's a kill. To be fair, Batrider's pretty good in these scenarios, but he has sticky napalm. So he doesn't even have flame break to push him away. And so that could be a kill. You could have something like Troll Warlord. Even a hero that I despise, Phantom Assassin, is going to be good with Bristleback because she can conveniently connect to the hero that he's applying minus nine armor to. And so, yeah, I, I, I was a little bit problematic with this because look at this clip. This is the perfect example. He applies the goo to the Mars here, which I like. As I was saying, I think it's good to split it up a little bit. Just one stack is, is more than enough. Hits level two and it starts building the quills. Now, I think he probably misplayed a little bit here. Um, he's probably supposed to kite to the right, just away from the Mars, right? Because if he kited away from the Mars, I don't think they would have been able to kill him. Like if he ran here, he ran backwards, probably the big mistake in this case. Gets spear to the tree, did have a six stick. Unfortunately, the goo ran out on both of them and now it feels really bad as he has to reapply. And they felt that they would get the kill, but yeah, the goo ran out. It was barely not enough. And the real problem here is that, well, Luna just doesn't exactly do too much right now. She's not terrible, but she's certainly not great. Imagine this guy got slowed by a troll warlord. 
or again, hit by something like a gyro. And gyro could even commit and double down on this, and he could take the facet, something like afterburner, right? Where every successful hit of rocket barrage gives him movement speed. So that would allow him to stick on top of them and continue to hit. So I just think that there are combos. I know that Luna's very, very meta, and it's very safe. People also like it against Mars, because in team fights, you can get through the Mars' bulwark by killing him with Eclipse and loosen beam damage and flactory damage. So the magic, the magic mix is very good. And you might say, oh, well, you know, it, it's it's also a BK, early BKB carrier. So it's good against Mars. You can get out of Arena, right? Also, um, because her attack range is low, she doesn't really get her autos don't get blocked by Arena nearly as much as longer ranged ranged heroes uh, like Medusa or Gyro. But that's why I think something like Marcy is fantastic. I know, again, I know it's niche, but it would have been great this game as uh, it's a response to droughts, you know, super solid against droughts, good against Mars. It's, uh, you know, it's and it's really good with this guy in the lane. So I know I'm kind of harping on that, but it's important. Now, the next thing to note here is I really love the Timbers gameplay. It's something I want to quickly cover here. I really love it because I think he did a great job of just understanding his timing and being patient. I think something people do wrong on Timber very specifically is they overplay their hand. Now, now let's take a look at that. So first things first, he ends up getting a kill on his level six timing. And this kill, he executed very, very well. So he applied a bunch of Q stacks. The duration of the stat loss is 14 seconds and the cooldown of the ability is 6.5. So you want to uh, continuously use it on that, right? To really get the HP pool down so that when you hit your ulti, hits level six, he knows he's hitting level six, keeps the ulti on him, sets up for the Twisted Chakram, hits another Q, dropping the HP pool, Twisted Chakram finishes him off. So really, really good execution. Now, this is where I think most Timbers will grease the game. They're going to overplay their hand like crazy. Uh, not at the six minute mark. So if you get a haste rune, <laughs> when you get a haste rune on any mid hero, it's basically a free kill. And haste rune should almost always be looked at that way. If you get a haste rune, just go kill a side lane. I mean, it's essentially a freebie. Um, it's the best early game rune in the game in, in most scenarios. So gets a haste rune, gets a kill. And I like what he does from here on out. So he's going to go Kaya next. And Kaya is the best farming item on Timber by a long shot. Nothing is even close. However, it's not a good fighting item, and Kaya should be viewed this way. Uh, for the longest time, people have been buying Kaya, and they'll just kind of go fight anyway. And I, I don't, I think on some heroes it's okay, like on Storm, because that hero has way more mobility, right? It can kite in and out, and it uses the mana from Kaya to stay alive. On Timber, that, I mean, that's not the case at all. And so you're gonna notice he's gonna farm Triangle, then after that, he's gonna head back to mid, he'll farm the mid wave, he'll contest the power rune, gets a regen. Farms the enemy jungle, which is nice. I mean, it's it's a little dangerous, but he sees the tiny, and he's not going to die to a Sand King Muerta. No shot. Not with a 10 wand and a, and a regen rune. Ever since they made it where regen runes give you regen even after being cancelled, I mean, it's a very efficient early game. Burns all of his mana before using the regen rune. Has it going? Sees a kill? I mean, again, like, this is not risky. It's not risky because it's a go on a ward. And most importantly, you know, this guy is most likely alone. You see this and you see this. I mean, the only hero that could be here is Tiny. Again, that's not a threat. He's got a regen rune going. It's in an open area and it's not that close to towers. It's a beautiful kill. Super nice connection, but he's not taking this big fight. I like how he doesn't TP bottom here. He's not forcing it. He understands that he can kind of just farm the deep jungle. He is farming up here because he doesn't want to consider joining the fight, right? He's like, okay, if, if a fight breaks out like in this area, I'll come over, but you're never shifting all the way here. And I like that he doesn't commit to it because he's going to be able to clear the mid wave and naturally you're going to push the next wave and then you're going to uh, contest the power rune. Looks like he's going to run top here. Hope, hopefully get lucky, gets lucky, gets a DD. Kaya completed. Going to cut the mid wave back out. And again, because he has Kaya, I think it's really important that he doesn't take some sort of like four on four engagement because that's that's kind of how this hero feeds. Like what people make the mistake of is, they have one point of reactive and a, and a farming item, and then they go nuts instead of just doing this. I mean, to be fair, shout out his teammates for, of course, having these big stacks for him. But he's going to take these back camps back to the mid wave, considers invading, just wanted to look for a pickoff. Pickoff isn't happening. Kaya timing is up, so you can continue to farm jungle. By the way, you always take shovel if you're a mid hero with bottle, because if you shovel in the, in the river, it gives you a water rune, which is completely overpowered. I mean, shovel is absolutely overtuned in my opinion for mid heroes i mean it is ridiculously overpowered to be able to get a damn water rune and get like what is it almost 200 mana 
total, I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy. It's it's like a low cooldown to 40 seconds. And but yeah, again, he's not over rotating. You'll notice here, farming up the, the back jungle. Gonna go for the bar rune. I think his drought dies in a moment from now. No, okay. But like, he's not... T oh, yeah, yeah, the drought does get smoked on. But he doesn't TP. Why? Because it's not his time. Uh, you know how many people would TP here? So many. Why? Because they're like, yeah, I'm strong. I'm level 11. My team's gonna scream at me if I don't TP. Right? Because they're diving the carry. But you don't TP if it's not your time. Certain mid heroes just are farming heroes. Certain offlaners are farming heroes. Timber is one of these heroes. And the problem with Timber is people will go a build like this. And it's a reason why it's low win rate. People will go item builds like this because they see pros doing it. And they just don't understand. They don't play for pickoffs and farm. They play for, they'll just take team fights. And, and obviously you can if the conditions are perfect. Like all of the spells, like major spells have been committed. But again, oh, love this. Another pickoff, right? He's really good about kind of just being able to discern between fights and pickoffs. As he's farming down anyway. See, he said his clock is nearby. Where it's just kind of hitting some camps. Quick kill. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Back to the jungle. 14 minute rune coming up. Shovels up another water rune. Completely busted mechanic. 2.5k gold. Batrider's making stacks. And I love that they're slowing down the pace of the game. They have a 3 to a 4k lead. You know what they're not doing? Randomly invading the jungle with a Kaya Timber. You know how many teams would do that? My team would probably do that. I would probably be the guy calling a smoke. Oh, my Timber's winning mid and and uh, my, <laughs> my Timber's winning mid and you know, we're winning top and Luna has no game. I mean, look at this Luna's net worth. Like, go kill them, guys. You know what happens? You dive a tier two as three heroes, five people TP in, four people TP in, <laughs> and you die. Instead, comfortable. 14 minute axe, which I don't expect a 14 minute axe, even in, in the majority of good games. He's 4-0 with multiple ancient stacks that he did not make. Uh, he got lucky on a rune, you know, so I think uh, he got a regen rune first rune. So things have obviously, he got shovel, right? Everything has lined up this game. I mean, like, let's be real, but it is very easy to grief games like this. Now he's got his axe. Now that he has his axe, look what he immediately does. Just to quickly go back immediately this is the difference tb's bottom ready to go fight breaks out kill the sand king i mean to be fair he didn't need the axe for this this could have been a play with just kaya but it would be risky you get the point right it's just, it's it's in a more risky area but he's more than happy to even you know take a chance as just going deep he's got his axe so he does not care about anything luna's going on i'm like bro you know how this works <laughs> And yeah, they're doing a little bit of damage, but nah, it's, it's nothing significant. He's totally fine. He's got the HP pool. Even though the Ags did expire there, he's got the HP pool. 2.3k HP at this point, and boom. He would have died, you know, without Axe. He absolutely would die here. It's also a game where he could just buy Eternal Shroud and he'd also be invincible. I think Ags is kind of seen as like more of a bursty option, which I, I do prefer it. I think it gives you kind of that damage, as long as your team has stuns. And so I think this game, it's perfect because if I have Mars, Bat, and Clock, I'm gonna assume I'm gonna lack damage in the mid game. And so I'm gonna buy Ags over Eternal Shroud, you know? I'm gonna I'm gonna assume they're gonna tank some of the damage for me while they initiate. And Bat, Bat lacks damage in the mid game. Clock generally lacks a bit of damage. Mars is not the highest damage offlaner. It's more of a control hero. And so Ags Timber makes a ton of sense rather than Eternal Shroud this game. As, yeah, I mean, now he's just playing like a Psycho. I mean, just look at these general map movements, just cutting across mid. And you can see the complete difference. And that's why... The problem is people will watch a game like this and they're gonna be like, wow, Timber can kill everyone. And they just go run around and try to fight off cooldown. They have like 70 CS in minute 18. And they're like, dude, Timber sucks. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Timber does suck if you play him in the way you think you should play him. Couple of things as well. I'm, I'm just a big fan of this Drow item build. Um, I think Shadowblade is just really, really good. Ever since they buffed it, um, they used to make it where it was way worse on ranged heroes. I believe it gave less movement speed. Uh, ever since they changed that, it's the best way to get around the map on ranged heroes because for a lot of melee heroes, if they want to move quick, either their hero just is quick because melee heroes tend to be quicker than ranged heroes. This is just a fact of Dota outside of some exceptions like, you know, Caudal and Luna and Pugna. Yeah, that tends to be the case. Obviously, it's not 100%. Dry was definitely a very slow hero, but Shadowblade lets you move 20% faster. You can't buy phase boots. Phase boots are just bad on ranged heroes. I mean, you don't need the armor on Drow either. So you don't want phase boots. So the, the Silver Edge or... The, I mean, eventually the Silver Edge probably, but the Shadowblade helps you get around. I will say, I, I do think in some games, like, oh, they got Team Wipe Top. 
I do think in some games it's better to buy Pike, just because it's a better early game fighting item, like team fighting item. But the way they were playing the map, where like the timber's kind of sweeping, the draft has to play alone. I do believe it's actually better to go Shadowblade. He's just so squishy. Like <laughs> when you see a draft with 1300 HP, you're like, Yeesh. so the last and final decision uh, I wanted to talk about for this video is the Hex on Mars. Now, this is like such a weird item decision, but I thought you guys might find it interesting about why it's probably good, or at least why I think it's good. So the reason why I believe Hex is really good this game, because there's a lot of options here, right? Um, some people will buy an Aether Lens so they can blink further uh, and so they can cast the arena from further, mainly just for the blink cast range. Um, sometimes you'll see Refresher is actually a build that people do in this case. Some people will try to go right click, like I've seen people go Deso and shit like that. So there, I mean, there's even just like Pipe and Crimson that some people will buy. So there's a lot of options, but he picks up Hex. And I think Hex is really good this game for one major reason. I like, it's not like the best Hex game. And the reason why I say it's not the best is I actually think they have chain stun regardless of the Hex. And so it's not like, oh, if they find a target, they can't chain lock them. But what it definitely allows them to do, number one, is not have to chain stun with Clock and Bat. And that will actually let Bat go for different targets. Um, you know what I mean? He doesn't have to like chain stun Luna if they find him to stop the BKB from going off. He can kind of just like let the Mars do his thing. Uh, so that's number one. But I would say even more importantly, number two, is that they don't have a save. And to me, this is actually the most important part. I think in this case, if you buy a Hex and the enemy team has Oracle or Shadow Demon or, you know, even Dazzle, <laughs> something like this or Abaddon, it's going to feel quite bad, actually. And a decision like this would be terrible. Against save heroes, it's much better aim for something like an Octarine where you can kite in and out a lot better, do multiple initiations or a refresher so that the save on the first initiation will then get countered by a second reinitiation by a refresher. And uh, yeah, and so the Luna ends up dying here. And this was a big turning point in the game because, I mean, this guy is BKB. He feels really strong. His team's right next to him. No way, I'm going to die. But they get the chain stun. The clock didn't even initially find the angle. I mean, as I said, the bat and the clock, I mean, they didn't even have to chain stun here. And that's actually really nice, right? Because now they can just go for the next kill, which I don't know why he didn't exactly lasso this guy right away. He definitely should have. <laughs> letting letting the Sand King almost get Epi off there was a little sus. I'm not going to lie. It was a little sus. But all right, that's going to be all for today's video. I know this video is a lot different than my average video. Uh, I, I, these videos tend to do really, really poorly just because they're kind of all over the place and people like structure and simple ideas and tier lists and broken shit. But uh, I mean, tips like this, advice like this tends to be what actually gains you MMR. I mean, it's a mix, right? Both are really good, but I, I actually think like niche knowledge and matchup experience and item understanding is like you, you have to know these things just so you can make good decisions and most importantly, make decisions based on matchups. I think that's something a lot of people struggle with. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one and I'm out. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.